Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Is that on? Sam I. B. DeGange, doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. Christelle and I diligently trying to load up both cameras. Uh, trickier than you would think. All right, friends, um, I wanted to make sure all of you knew that Passing Time, by the band I'm in, is running a contest. Go to YouTube.com, uh, Sam from Passing Time, or just go to YouTube and type in Passing Time, the Alexandrian Solution, and uh, you'll find the band. The newest video is posted up there. Friends, how many of you following Donald Trump? Well, he's recently gotten a lot of flack for talking about anchor babies, which is, of course, when uh, someone deliberately comes into the, it's called a pregnancy tour, Someone comes into the country on purpose, illegally, just to give birth to the child here, making the child a, uh, a citizen. It is a misreading of the, uh, the amendment that's quoted, by the way. It is not constitutionally sound in any way, shape, matter, or form. Anybody who tells you that it is is lying to you. And I think it's funny because uh, Jeb Bush was saying that it was a, uh, it was a very derogatory term. And when he said that, his poll numbers went down and Trump's went up. And again, I'm not a, a, a huge Trump fan. I worry about him because of uh, things like Snowden and uh, the way he treated that hero and the things that he would like to see done to him. But we could do worse than Trump, that's for sure. I mean, I, I don't think that Trump would make an amazing president, but I think he'd probably make a pretty good one. And uh, once Jeb started now using the term anchor baby, other people have been listening to him. The point is, People are sick of illegal immigration. I'll be the first to say that it needs to be cheaper to get into the country and it needs to be faster. If that pisses you off, then great. That happens to me all the time. It needs to happen much quicker and much faster. We don't need to be selling citizenship. We also don't need to be paying for everyone that is born into the country to a mother who doesn't speak English and to pay for everything that they need for the rest of their life. That is why the country is going bankrupt. We'll get to that in a minute. Listen to this is Breitbart. One out of every 12 newborns in the United States is an anchor baby, or the U.S. child born of illegal migrants, according to the Pew Research Center for Studying. This means that one anchor baby is delivered every 93 seconds, somebody else said 88 seconds, based on the 2008 consensus data analyzed by the Pew. Every 93 seconds an anchor baby is born, and you get to pay for it. The huge number of foreign children born on U.S. soil, roughly 340,000 per year, is also an economic imposition on Americans who pay taxes to help raise, feed, and educate the children of illegal immigrants. Now, many of you are going to say that the illegal immigrant should be forgiven, and I think I may have some illegal, illegal immigration in my uh, prior to my grandmother, so I'm not saying, uh, you know, I get... Maybe I shouldn't be in the country. You could argue that maybe I really shouldn't. Who knows? I mean, uh, people would say that I shouldn't be in the country, even if it isn't true. Uh, it doesn't change the fact that it's wrong. Um, it's, it's a very bad idea. It leads to, if, among other things, taxes that we cannot afford to keep putting into this. Not to mention, if the person couldn't get some kind of a job in the country that they were in, then how are they going to get a job here when they don't speak the language? They at least spoke the language there. Um, you can say there's more opportunity in America. Well, I don't know that that's really the case if you don't speak the language. I don't know if that's necessarily the case for the average American. There's no upward mobility in this country. Are you out of your mind? That doesn't happen. Um, the jobs have been sent overseas. There's no upward mobility for the people that live in the country legally. How is there going to be upward mobility for people that don't even speak the language? And lastly, let's say that we get all the illegal immigration that Obama and Jeb Bush and everyone else wants. Let's say that we get all those illegal immigrants and we, we make them citizens, right? Okay, well, if they're a citizen, then they're entitled to minimum wage, right? According to the law of the land, right? They are entitled to minimum wage. Therefore, you won't be able to pay them less than everybody else anymore. 
because they're citizens. So what are these big corporations and these people that hire illegals, what are they going to want when that happens? Well, they're going to want more illegal immigrants, aren't they? Face it, you, how many, whether you're, which side of this you're on, hear me out here. They keep saying, we need illegal immigrants to do the jobs that Americans won't do for wages that Americans demand. Okay. Once the illegal immigrant becomes a citizen, then where are you going to get your cheap labor from? You're going to try to get more illegal immigrants. There. Right there. That's why Trump is going to the top. Rand Paul's out there fighting Planned Parenthood. Are they terrible? Yes. Are there bigger fish to fry? Yes. I'm sorry, Planned Parenthood is not going to get you in the White House, Rand. It says the huge number of foreign children born on U.S. soil is also an economic... I read that. I'm sorry. Eventually, those 340,000 U.S.-born foreign children can join the U.S. workforce and compete for wages against the roughly 4 million children of U.S. parents that enter the slow-growing U.S. economy each year. In other words, it's also hosing the legal immigrants, the ones who did it correctly, which is why many legal immigrants support Trump. Only 28% of likely U.S. voters believe that children born to illegal immigrants in this country should automatically be American citizens, according to a 2011 Rasmussen Report survey. So don't give me the BS that everybody likes it. No, they don't. In fact, the proposal was so unpopular that even Jeb Bush, who favors large-scale immigration, which is another reason not to vote for him, has criticized pregnant foreigners who grab citizenship for their kids by flying into the country, posing as tourists. Bush described this practice as a fraud, it is, and inserted that, frankly, it's more related to Asian people. I don't care who it's from. If you're in the country illegally, get the hell out. I don't care if you're Canadian. Get oot. The growing industry of birth tourism, as it's called, is so large that even California's government recently cracked down on the illegal but supposedly suppressed trade. So what do they get? Well, once they get in, once they get to be a citizen, just because their mother snuck into the country, they can collect federal welfare on behalf of the child, the illegal immigrant, and the adult child, as a U.S. citizen, will eventually be able to win a green card for his or her parents, despite their prior illegal entry into the country. Um, let me ask you a question. What happens if you go sneaking into Mexico? Go see what they do to you if they catch you. Try being a criminal. You try to get into Mexico, they'll put you in a Mexican prison and lock you down forever, yet they want us to take their illegals. How does that work? The National Review, for those of you that say that I don't give sources, the 71% of illegal alien-headed households with children received some sort of welfare in 2009, compared with 39% of native-headed houses with children. Illegal immigrants generally access welfare programs through their U.S.-born children, to whom the government assistance is then guaranteed. Additionally, the U.S.-born children of illegal aliens are entitled to American public schools, health care. Most, most, most Americans don't have health care. They get it free. And more, even though illegal alien households rarely pay taxes. So, friends, if you cannot see how inherently disastrous this is, then it, it's, it's not even... It's, I don't even know how you found the show. This is how a country dies. I'm not saying keep people from other nations out of our country. I'm saying keep everyone here legally. And yes, if they're poor, then I don't think they should have to buy their way into the country. But they should have to be able to support themselves within, I would say, a year. Okay? What, a year? I, 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 fine. You came into the country. And then before you can stay, before that year's up, maybe you need to pass a citizen test. And you need to be able to speak English. And if that makes me a terrible person, then welcome to the correct views, because I'm still right. Friends, Michael Snyder, end of the American dream. It is time to kick prepping into overdrive, because this stock market crash is just the beginning. Now, this was dated on the 25th. Now, this is the morning of the 27th that I'm doing this report. And granted, it has come up just a little bit, but not enough to be of any significant help in the long term. It's very common during a crash for the market to recover during the crash for temporary short bursts of time. Uh, the biggest rally ever was in 08, and we all know that 08 saw the, what, arguably the biggest or second biggest crash ever. 
So this matters because I don't want you zoning out. Okay, I'm not in the stock market. You don't have to be in the stock market. If you don't pay attention, you could be underwater really quick. It said, remember what happened back in 2008? That crisis took most people totally by surprise. Underwater. Millions of Americans lost their jobs, and because most of them were living paycheck to paycheck, all of a sudden most of them couldn't pay for their rent or their mortgage either. Large numbers of families that were once living a comfortable middle-class lifestyle suddenly found themselves destitute. That'd be underwater. While this coming crisis is going to be even worse by the time it is all said and done, and it is going to be an economic nature, over the past two trading days, the Dow has done more than one thousand point nose dive where do you go nose diving at underwater okay last day for those of you on high def christelle is having a, a blast with our effects the shaking that so many have warned about has begun and the shaking plays out you and your family will need cash food supplies and a whole bunch of other things if you do not already have everything prepared then you need to kick your prepping into overdrive because we are on a very compressed time frame now and I've been doing commentary on this forever. I think it's um, very important that you realize that we are, we've printed our, ourselves into death. And things could get very grim very fast. Um, right now, gold is just not doing well. I have been purchasing it whenever I can. And I advise you to do the same. Because once the crash hits, you're going to need something. And again, I'm, I'm not that old. I'm, I'm in my, I'm 42. So... By the time I retire, even if it trickles up, I'll be fine. So it, if the crash doesn't happen, it's not like you're, uh, uh, the uh, gold's going to suddenly be worth nothing. They're going to be you know, what, throwing it in the streets by the pound or something. So you're, you're not hurting yourself by doing it. The top advisor, British Prime Minister Gordon Brown, his name is uh, Damien McBride, is saying the same thing. The former advisor to Gordon Brown has urged people to stock up on canned goods and bottled water. As stock markets around the world slide, in other words, they're expecting the potential for major food disruptions and things like that. Every time we want to eat, Christel, what is it you want to do? She wants to eat the food we have stored. It never fails. Uh, don't do that. It's very, very bad. Um, it says he didn't speak in generalities. According to an article in one of the most important newspapers in the UK, McBride is urging his fellow citizens to do very specific things. Advise on... Advice on looming crash number one, get hard cash in a safe place now. Don't assume that banks and ca uh, cash points will be open or that bank cards will work, he tweeted. Um, do me a favor, look up how to live without banks. If you don't want to watch me yap, then go ahead and read how to live without banks. Just type in Sam DeGangie, how to live without banks, or correct views, same title. I did a video and an article on this. Tells you how to live without banks. It tells you what to do if you need to have a bank account open to cash a check or something. It tells you how not to lose your ass off. It's very simple. It's like a, an eight-minute video. It's a five-minute read. The most important thing is that you can't have your money in a bank because, as we've seen in Greece and Cyprus and everything, they were letting the Greeks take like $60 a day out of the bank. Imagine having $200,000 in the bank, and they're letting you take out $60 a day. Why? Because they know that they're about to crash the currency all around you. You're going to be doomed so don't, don't, don't put your money in a bank. Cash advice number two. Do you have enough bottled water, tinned goods, and other essentials at home for a month indoors? If not, get shopping. Again, it might not be very tasty, but you can live an awfully long time on peanut butter. And I say that because people can afford peanut butter. A lot of people can't afford to prep. I, I can't afford to go prepping, but I'll tell you why. You can afford canned goods and peanut butter things to sustain life if things go bad for a little while and again these aren't I'm, I'm commenting on this because this doesn't seem like alarmist talk to me that'd be saying oh the world's gonna end no this is saying things could be really bad for a minute and you need to you need to really brace for it last bit of advice he has agree on a rally point with loved ones in case uh, the transport and communications get cut off you have somewhere to head to and a time and place to meet up um, it's pretty alarming. And uh, there's one there, uh, Chuck Baldwin talks about needing bottled water and learning how to filter things. Hopefully, hopefully it won't come to all that. But you'd be foolish not to have some kind of preparation for what could be a really, really bad time. 
And again, this isn't my opinion. These are facts. We can see the stock problems all around us. And we were just talking about Greece, so I might as well segue here into an RT article. Germany made 100 billion euro profit on the Greek crisis. How many of you know the Eurozone over there? And, uh, of course, Germany, Brussels, whatever, they're in charge of so much of the structure. And they've been saying how Greece is hurting the Eurozone and their inability to pay their debts, which the banksters got them into, which is another reason not to bank, that the, the, the Greeks were responsible for all of this. And uh, to some degree they were, they overspent, but not to the degree that they're getting hosed now. Germany did not lose money. They made a hundred billion euros. Now, does that hundred billion euros? Does that sound like a, does that sound like a loss to you? Because I'll tell you what. If that's a loss, then give me a hundred billion dollar euros, a hundred billion euros, I should say. And uh, you know, I think that's a loss I can take. Go ahead and give it to me. That'd be great. I'll buy a Greek island. Everybody else is. Greece's biggest creditor, Germany, has made a huge profit on the country's debt crisis over the last five years, and it saved as it's saved through lower interest payments on funds borrowed amid investor flights to safety. Each time investors got bad news about Greece, they rushed to the safe haven of Germany, with the interest rates on German government bonds failing, according to the study of the private nonprofit Leibniz Institute of Economic Research at Greens France Press reported today. There's your source. I keep saying that because I get these boneheads that think that what I'm doing here on this show is my opinion political commentary, and I'm commenting on facts, and I tell you where you can find the facts, so quit saying that. The estimated 100 billion euro Germany has saved since 2010 accounted for over 3% of its GDP, the report said. These savings exceed the cost of the crisis, even if Greece were to default on its entire debt, the study said. The bonds of countries such as the United States, France, and the Netherlands had benefited to a much smaller extent, so even we made money off the poor people, unfortunately. Germany's finance minister, Wolfgang Schwebel, who has always been against writing off the Greek debt, pointed to his own government's balanced budget. Germany, excuse me. The balanced budget, however, was possibly mainly a result of Germany's interest savings through the Greek crisis. In other words, they banked off of the wholesale destruction of Greece and then had the audacity to preach austerity to them after it was in a large way the World Bank and the German banks that hosed Greece to begin with. A Grexit. And they should have taken the Grexit, and I'm telling you they're going to regret having not done it. Kit Daniels, Prison Planet, Obama judge finds school over Christian prayer. An Obama-appointed district judge fined a Mississippi school district over $7,500 after a pastor led a prayer before the optional school assembly. Let me tell you something. The separation of church and state means that the state cannot endorse a religion, and it means that they cannot do things like this. Um... It means that they can't make you say a Christian prayer. It also means that they cannot stop someone else from saying a Christian prayer. Any other reading of that is an incorrect view. U.S. District Judge uh, Carlton Reeves said the Rankin, Mississippi Public School District defied his prior order, barring prayer at school events, by allowing Reverend Rob Gill to begin an assembly honoring students with above-average ACT scarrows with a prayer. Point is, the judge has absolutely no legal standing to do this whatsoever. It is an absolute injustice. That is not at all what is in the Constitution. That is not what's been amended to it. And that is absolutely not what that means. The district's breach did not take very well, and it occurred in a very bold way, Reeves stated. Its conduct displays that the district did not take any effort to adhere to the agreed judgment. That's because it was a misjudgment. You should be disbarred. The judge appointed to Obama in 2010 also barred the distribution of Bibles on the school district's campuses by Gideon's International. And they're the ones that most people know because they leave Bibles in hotel rooms. The case came to fruition after a high school student sued the school district over the assembly with the help of a secular American Humanist Association. 
Along with $7,500 in fines, the school district will also pay the students legal fees and threaten to sue them ten grand if they did it again. I think they should do it and refuse to pay. That's what I think. Mass disobedience is the only way you're going to get this kind of crap to end. The school district's defense team argued that the assembly wasn't mandatory, but the judge countered by accusing the district of trying to indoctrinate students with Christianity. It doesn't matter. It's optional. If they don't want to be indoctrinated, then they don't have to go. That's what optional means. How did you become a judge if you're too stupid to freaking read? It deliberately went out of its way to entangle Christian indoctrination into the educational process. No, the last time I checked, Judgey Wedgey there, the educational process did not involve optional. Algebra is not optional. From the accounts detailed in the record, it appears that incorporating religious script and prayers with school activities has been a longstanding tradition of the district, and that is their right to do so, and you have done a great injustice to them. While there's been a long-standing debate over the separation of church and state, keep in mind it says that such a separation is also intended to protect religious believers from state interference, which is what this judge did. When the state insists that one's religious beliefs be supplanted by another's, in this case by secularism, that is the uh, anti-religion, then might one argue that the state is establishing a religion contravention to the Constitution's intent. In other words, secularism is in fact a belief system that you're forcing on someone else. As a result, the government is turning Christians into second-class citizens. Today's courts wrongly interpreted separation of church and state to mean that religion has no place in the public arena, or that morality derived from religion should not be permitted to shape our laws, author said filmmaker Dennis DeSouza wrote. Somehow, freedom for religious expression has become freedom from religion, religious expression. Secularists want to empty the public square of religion and religious-based morality so that they can monopolize the shared space for society and force upon them their own views. And that's exactly what it is. That's how you end up living in the screwed up, messed up times that we live in now. And it's been like this since before I was born. I, I mean, I was born into a screwed up mess, and I've only watched it continue down its screwed up mess direction. For the last time, the separation of church and state says that no one can interfere with someone else saying a prayer. It does not mean that someone else cannot say a prayer. That is a infallible correct view. Friends, you are listening to the correct views. Make sure you go to uh, look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. He writes some of the best fiction and prose and poetry and political rants extant today. And uh, also, if you can, I would greatly appreciate it if you check out Sticker Junkie. They made these amazing stickers. Hey, by Sticker Junkie. Wicked. And uh, you'll be winning these stickers if you go to, uh, go type in, in YouTube, Passing Time, The Alexandrian Solution. Um, I'm Sam from Passing Time. Go ahead and click that and you'll see the contest is up. You'll also be willing, winning a Pop Will Eat Itself ticket and an autograph from them and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, listen to this, JoeBriggsInfoWars.com, exclusive Hillary Clinton sanctioned child rape in Afghanistan. Joe Briggs, InfoWars. Now, I wish that this would get the kind of attention that her email scandal is getting. This is going to be... I do, if anybody even hears this story, if it, if it even touches anyone's conscience, even a little bit, leave me a comment. If anybody cares about true injustice at all, please leave a comment on this. U.S. State Department directive issued under former Secretary of Hate Hillary Clinton in 2012 ordered U.S. troops in Afghanistan to avoid criticizing certain taboo aspects of Afghan culture, including pedophilia and women's rights. Women's rights violations should be ignored according, or not, not criticized, according to Hillary Clinton. How many of you feminists just had a crap? And like, right, right, yeah. You said, oh my God, yeah. Avoid criticizing things like pedophilia and women's rights. 
Now, three years after the policy change, a decorated Green Beret is being kicked out of the U.S. Army for a 2011 incident in which he shoved an Afghan police commander accused of raping a boy and beating his mother. So, in other words, the hero that stuck up for the raped boy and the beat-up mother got penalized. And a lot of that was because of the sanctioning of certain actions uh, or ignoring certain things from our dear leader, Hillary Clinton. You know, you could talk about things she did a long time ago. I always hear people say, you need to give her a break. That was a long time ago. Well, this was a few years ago. So, no, she's not become a saintly person. Uh, two more stories to get to. This is alarming. Uh, report, 50 North Korean submarines vanish from Western radar. Could they be armed with nukes? Now, this would be a very bad idea because... It would be the one thing, I think, that would alienate even China further from North Korea. North Korea has virtually no allies. Uh, China, just on paper, is an ally, but you can tell even in the heavily redacted printings that are in China that the leadership there, thinks the leadership of Kim Jong-il in, uh, North, Car in uh, North Korea. North Carolina is going that way. And North Korea is, in fact, a nutcase. And uh, he, he could take out a city, but they would be leveled. They would be leveled. Now, keep in mind, we can't do much of a nuclear exchange against North Korea because of uh, South Korea. So we don't want to poison the, the, uh, the allies, rather good allies that we have in South Korea. However... We would, it would be, North Korea would be leveled. It would, if, if they were to nuke us, it would be the most ill-advised move ever. And if you're not familiar with North Korea and you're listening to this, then you would think no little pissant country like that is going to nuke uh, America. Let's face it, uh, North Korea can barely even get their uh, um, nuclear missiles off the ground. It's like an ant trying to lift a pumpkin. When they do make it, it's a miracle. You would say, hey, they would never attack America, right? Well, eh, look up some North Korean documentaries. I mean, mandatory dancing, haircuts sanctioned by the government. Families locked up three generations down for the accusation of speaking out against the government. I mean, they are an insane, insane regime that leads that. The whole family is insane. And nobody but that family has led it since the 50s. So they might be stupid enough. He, he, he surrounds himself with, uh, Kim, Kim Jong-un, he surrounds himself with uh, yes men and women. And uh, people that he just absolutely controls. And if they, if they give him military advice, maybe it's good advice that he doesn't like. Who knows? I mean, he, he had his uncle killed. Um, he's had, he's, his family has kidnapped actresses from South Korea. Uh, the country is an absolute mess. And I think it matters when submarines that they can rather sloppily equip with nukes end up missing. This is Max Slavo. SHTFplan.com. Last week, North Korea and South Korea exchanged live military fire across the demilitarized zone known as the 39th parallel. The standoff has led to threats from both sides, with a reported doubling of the military personnel and artillery on the northern side of the border. While negotiators discuss a settlement behind closed doors, the situation remains tense, and both countries are maintaining high alert levels. This morning, it was reported that some 50 North Korean submarines stationed around the peninsula and visible to northern radar systems suddenly vanished, suggesting that later Kim Jong-un is preparing his forces for a preemptive strike in the event that the talks between the two nations fail. They're trying to find some kind of peace again. Basically, basically North Korea is having a fit because South Korea is blasting facts about the evil regime into North Korea. And North Korea is saying they're going to uh, start a war over it. Keep in mind there was a treaty, but there's there's never been a, there's a ceasefire. But there's, on paper, they have been at war since the 50s. The trouble, the, the, big, the big issue is here is you've got someone who's, got, who's very likely to make the uh, same mistakes that Hitler thankfully did. Uh, he refused to listen to his generals. 
believed that he was this god leader and got himself destroyed and by entering Russia against the advice of everyone that he had surrounded himself to do their jobs. He didn't let them do their jobs. Well, now we've got a little tin horn dictator like this in North Korea that has a nuke. Now, granted, 50 submarines vanished in North Korea. 25 of them probably sank due to ineptitude. But the other 25, okay, I'm joking, but you know what I'm saying. This could, this could be bad because you only need one nuke to come over. And then they're going to get flattened. They're going to be destroyed. But the trouble is, who knows if, uh, if China is going to feel like it needs to step in uh, to a huge degree. I don't know. Probably not a massive degree. But enough that it could really create some problems. And when we're living in a, uh, a stock reality such as the stock market news I gave you at the beginning of the show, then you can see clearly why it would matter in that regard, too. I'm not saying that North Korea is going to destroy America. I'm saying that this could be a very big problem for a number of reasons. Uh, not to mention nuclear fallout. We all know what it does. And any more nuclear activity in the Orient after Fukushima is another problem. More than 50 North Korean submarines are apparently sent out on a mystery mission, and the, artillery, and the artillery strength and warfare readiness along the front lines have been raised to the max. That suggests that the North has embraced the two-pronged strategy, tampering, tempering its traditional brickmanship with diplomacy. In other words, we're going to uh, do everything we can to put ourselves in a great position to first strike you the moment you say anything we don't like. The current sortie rate of North Korean submarines is as high as 10 times the rate in ordinary times, the military official said. Scores of subs have left their bases on the eastern and western coasts are off our radar, which is an unprecedentedly serious situation. You know what? I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's another uh, attempt on Kim Jong-un's life if he carries this on much further. Uh, again, to use the Hitler analogy, he, they tried to bomb him and they tried to kill him repeatedly. Uh, look at the trials of the poor men. You can find it on YouTube that tried to assassinate Hitler. Uh, someone is going, very likely, Mariah, don't be surprised. Remember I said it, remember I predicted it. Because I don't think the fat cats, the 1% that have been uh, fleecing the people who, I mean, there's almost no vegetation in certain parts of North Korea, not even trees, leaves. Because people are so hungry, they're eating the leaves. Um, the people that have been fleecing the population are not going to let Kim Jong-un bring their standard of living down by starting a war. They want things to stay pretty much the way they are. It said, due to North Korea's notoriously secretive military protocols, it's anyone guess what mission the submarines were given. Some suggest they may be transporting commandos who would launch surprise attacks should the talks break down. Other analysts indicate that the North may be preparing, preparing for attacks against military and commercial shipping vessels. Which would be an uh, unprecedented, which would not be unprecedented, evidenced by the sinking of the South Korean naval vessel in 2010. Again, remember the Lusitania? It was uh, it was hauling uh, weaponry, and it went down as well. To use another historical analogy of where this has happened and how this has led to wars before. See, tune into the correct views, and my commentary gives you a history lesson. One major concern among officials in South Korea in the U.S. is that some of the submarines may be armed with nuclear weapons. The country successfully launched a submarine-based ballistic missile in May of this year and has had an active nuclear weapons program for over a decade. U.S. officials are quietly expressing concern that the North could use its space launch vehicle to explode a high-altitude nuclear device over the U.S. That would be the EMP. Look up the correct views EMP. I've done whole stories on it that would create an electromagnetic pulse that would destroy major portions of the U.S. electrical grid system as well as the nation's critical infrastructures. How would that be before Christmas, before winter? Um, it, our, our electrical infrastructure is so bad it could take years to recover from an EMP blast. Now, granted, we would probably do the same thing to them and prevent them from having any electricity, but the fact that a North Korean is freezing to death is not going to change the fact that you are also freezing to death. Back to the prepping article that we did earlier, see how they tie together. The concern is so great that U.S. officials who watch North Korea closely are continuing monitoring the status of North Korean space launch vehicles whose status could suggest a preemptive nuclear strike against the U.S. And again, they are nuts enough to possibly do it, the people that run the country there. Um, 
generators are expensive to run, and if they launched an EMP, that could mess up gas delivery. So I, a generator is not necessarily going to get you out of the mess. Uh, if you live in a really sunny area, uh, solar generators are great for uh, small things. But uh, you know, if someone who lives in Seattle or something, or Ohio, where I live, you, you, it's never going to work. Two years on, it's quite possible that North Korea has modified such a weapon for ballistic missile deployment, that'd be the EMP, and they would want to do it from a submarine. The effects of which would be catastrophic should Kim Jong-un's regime decide to attack the U.S. with a first strike destabilizing blow in an effort to prevent a coordinated military response should the country move to the south. That's not going to work for a couple of reasons. First of all, we'd probably intercept the nuke on the way there, on the way here. Second of all, uh, we have fleets that are not dependent on the U.S. having electrical power for certain nuclear weapons to still work. Um, so that, that's not going to work for those two reasons right there. Said the concern has recently been reinforced by a little publicized study by the U.S. Army War College that said nuclear detonation at an altitude above a U.S. city could wipe out the electrical grid for hundreds, perhaps thousands of miles around, and the impact would be nothing short of catastrophic. Preparing for months without a commercial source of clean water because city water pressure is dependent upon the electrical pumping to storage towers and stoppage of sewage treatment facilities will require net methods for survival, particularly in populated areas. Now, again, you can collect, collect rainwater, but after Fukushima, that's not a real wise idea. And you, you can laugh at that if you want, but you won't be laughing when you have cancer. The May 2011 study titled In the Dark, Military Planning for a Catastrophic Critical Infrastructure Event concluded that there is very little in the way of backup capability for the electric grid upon which communications infrastructure is virtually dependent. In other words, it would pretty much shut the country down. An earlier report from the Center for Security Policy warns that a high-altitude nuclear weapon would be so devastating to the U.S. that as many as 9 out of 10 Americans would be dead within the first year of the attack. That would be true if it was, I think, if it was a, a significant 